Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to Vixen After Dark. Thank you so much for staying tuned in, tapped in, turned on. I'm your host, Tishi Ofo. And I know you guys are definitely here and excited to figure out what the hell is Chiron and Aries. Some of you guys may know, and some of you guys may not know. This is how you heal your inner childhood traumas, okay? Um, if you keep hearing about shadow work or mirror work or going within and finding the answers within, like I said, I always promote going within and allowing yourself to figure out how to work with these transits and these energies that are going on right now and how it's going to affect you. So let's go ahead and dive in. So Chiron moved from Pisces in 2019 and shifted to Aries, okay? So it's in a new cycle. Remember, Aries is the first sign of the zodiac sign. So it's going to be in Aries all the way until 2026. I feel like this is very relevant, especially what's going on right now. Um, this is really a good video so that we're not projecting our issues and problems onto other people, right? I always say you're responsible for your life, okay? It's totally up to you how you wanna live it, right? So let's talk about it. So what has this probably been looking like? Just to give you a little tidbit. So some of you guys since 2019 probably have looked into past life regression. You've probably been doing heavy shadow work and you may have um, had some shifts um, as far as monumental moments happened to you personally since 2019, possibly a lot of triggers, a lot of tests and things of that nature, okay? A cool little fun fact um, as well, depending on where, uh, what degree, what's up with all these words? Now, depending on what degree you have Chiron in, so that sometimes can correlate um, to the age that encouraged your Chiron wound, like when you really started to getting into the work. So I'll use me as an example. So my Chiron is, I think it's 20, hold on. I think my Chiron is 28 degrees. Let's go to the nail chart, people. Okay, so my Chiron was 28 degrees, right? So if we're gonna use the degree equaling our age, um, at the age of 28 is when I had a major shift. I remember this event like it was yesterday. I was in a relationship and this is the day that I deemed that alcohol was not for me, okay? Major shift happened. This was the year 2020, 2012, so I quit drinking and for years, for I think like three to four years, I even got a divorce. Um, I was married at the time, by the way. But I was my healthiest I've ever been. Many spiritual awakenings. I was so grounded. I had a good credit score. I had a good job. I was eating healthy. I was running. Like, I looked really good. But people said, oh, you're too skinny. But that was like a major monumental moment. So anyways, that kind of gives you like, maybe it may correlate with whatever age and what that year, you know, whatever happened to you as well, okay? So we're like a quick synopsis. So what is Chiron, okay? Um, wounded healer, just off rip, all right? But it's an asteroid that's between Saturn and Uranus, okay? Um, so it's known as the wounded healer, all right? So according to mythology, Chiron actually, um, was a great healer, was a very wise teacher. You can, guys can go look up the full on story, but he died from his own wounds, okay? Now, this is the area where we explore the things that we hide about ourselves, the things that we dislike about ourselves, and the things that we ignore about ourselves, okay? So pretty much Chiron just symbolizes things. We have unhealed injuries and, you know, incurable traumas, okay? However, this video is for you if you really are a person, instead of wearing a badge of playing victim of the things that you have gone through throughout your entire lifespan up to this day and age, and you want to transmute the energy, you want to work on yourself and become the better version or the best version of you that you can possibly be, and you accept the trauma that occurred to you, and you accept that life, this life journey, this journey called life, this game called life, is you're going to suffer, right? So, you know, if you accept all of that, that that suffering is a part of life, 
then Chiron can definitely literally be one of the keys of wisdom that can unlock many doors for you, okay? It's kind of like it'll initiate some type of portal or gate opening for you, all right? All in a nutshell, it's literally our wounds, how we heal, and how we transform, all right? It also bridges a gap between the material world and the spiritual world, so it's, it's, it's very correlated in that area, all right? I do have a couple of books um, oops, that I use. So here's one. This is called Momentum uh, by Quinn Barber. I definitely recommend you guys get this book. Let me give you an example, okay? So let's say for example, so she's talking about in this chapter, she talks about acceptance, okay? Um, you know, you can read about it. She probably even gives her own background story in here as well in each section. Um, and then you get a self guide at the end. Okay, so um, you get questions. This is your homework. You know, what is it that you wanna heal from? Um, what do I do when I wanna heal? What, what do I want to heal myself of? Have I healed myself in the past? You know, so on and so forth. And she gives you homework after you answer those questions. You know, writing a, write a letter to your younger self, write a letter to your older self, say whatever you feel, express where you are now, where you wanna be. Um, and then she also gives you affirmations and then boom, it'll go into, you know, the next one, which is trust, right? So you see how it goes. This book, some people take a whole year or two or three to get through it. And you can keep going through it over and over and over and over again. Um, and I've been like going back. So let's say, for example, you think you healed something, but maybe you've been triggered because you thought you were healed from it. So then here I go, I bust out the book. I go to that section <laughs> and then I redo the whole thing all over again. So that's why I like this because you can always refer back to it. So let me give you a couple of contents. So trust, validation, anger, sadness, uh, forgiveness, reflection, compassion, tranquility. She even talks about healing crystals, mudras, mantras, breathing exercises, great ways to escape, some community resources, um, and how to do some healing on your own at your house. Okay. Um, on the side of that, yeah, I have a notebook, of course. This is like... <laughs> This is the book, okay? So you can have like a separate book, which I recommend journaling is key when you are triggered, okay? So really quick, I'm gonna talk about um, whatever zodiac sign your Chiron is in, okay? Now, if you have Chiron in Aries, um, so Chiron represents a wound to the self, okay? That can be healed through asserting yourself in different manners and just taking action. Right, you need to be very assertive and always continue to take action to heal your wound. If you have Chiron and Taurus, um, Chiron represents a wound to the sense of self-worth, all right? So in the ways that you can heal yourself is gonna be cultivating lots of self-love and accepting who you are, not looking for validation outside of yourself because you, if you had Chiron and Taurus, you've probably been shunned from, I don't care if it's teachers, moms, dads, friends, like it's like you never were accepted. So you need to accept yourself, okay, for who you are. So this could be a very life, all this is like lifelong journey, right? But we need to figure out how to work with this so that we can engage with other energies within the world. Chiron and Gemini. So this represents a wound to the way that you communicate if you have Chiron and Gemini, all right? And the way that you have been connecting with other people. So the way that you can heal yourself is through the way that you converse with other people, the way that you express yourself to other people. Um, really being open and honest with your communication style with other people. Because the more transparent that you become, the more that you can be yourself and live the life that you want to live, okay? Being authentically you. Chiron and Cancer. So Chiron represents a wound to your emotional security, okay? so. 
you're going to be able to heal yourself through nurturing okay whether that's nurturing yourself or other people all right and really trying to build supportive connections supportive relationships so you have to in order to heal yourself it actually helps you to heal you know and be supportive of other other people like being very optimistic you know um showing unconditional love so that you can receive that unconditional love back you see how this is making sense if you have chiron and leo so this is going to represent a wound to your sense of identity okay um and the way that you will be uh the way that you should be healing yourself you know just to give you a quick synopsis would be through acknowledging where your strong points are what are your strengths remember leo represents the strength card in tarot, in tarot right so you need to recognize what are your talents that way you can transmute that energy into some talents or skill sets that you have so that's how you're going to be able to help heal your wound uh, if you have a uh, chiron and virgo this is going to represent a wound to your sense of trying to perfect everything like you're always trying to perfect some things you're always trying to you know before you lay something out or before anyone sees anything it's like you have to always be perfect so the way that you can heal through this um and not have to make everything so perfect is through just knowing that you have to accept your flaws and all honey beyonce said it best okay um accept all of your imperfections how you are right now it's like you better tell people to take it or leave it. You have to really accept you and the things that you do and know that they are good enough. You don't have to perfect anything. Just to know that nobody's perfect. Somebody can be perfect for you, um, but no one is perfect. You catch my drift? If you have uh, Chiron and Libra, so this represents a wound to yourself of, uh, to your sense of, I said self, uh, balance, okay? Um, finding balance and harmony in all of your relationships. Okay, so you probably have trouble with that, right? So the way that you can heal through that is to first love yourself. You gotta put the mask on first. You gotta love all pieces of you first. Like, I feel like, if you have Chiron and Libra, these are the people that will buy other people's love to make them love them in a sense without fixing them. That's how they cover it up. So you want to make sure that you fully accept the way you look, the way you talk, the way you dress, the way you walk, everything that you do. All right. Um, that way uh, you can really find peace. Like you can really find peace within yourself and move forward, um, you know, because self-love is just key because when you don't love yourself how the hell are you loving anybody else you know what i'm saying chiron in scorpio um so this represents a wound to your sense of trust and also intimacy because scorpio is ruled by pluto so the way that you heal yourself is really facing your deepest fears okay that it goes that goes real deep we can go really into it but i'm trying to be really quick with this and also facing the things that make you feel vulnerable so what are your vulnerabilities okay so you're gonna have to be your whole life you know probably working on these things all right and really just go outside of the box like if you don't know something you, you can't know everything right so you have to really dive in and experience life that's how you're gonna help heal your wound Chiron and Sagittarius. So Chiron represents a wound to your sense of purpose in this world. And because, you know, you didn't, in your past life, you really didn't know who you were. You were just acting out and doing whatever you wanted without anything set in stone. So you had to tell, you, you accepted hearing from other people to tell you how to live your life. So in this, in this lifetime, you need to really find something and stick to it right 
Um, you need to ex get out there and explore, find new perspectives, learn new ways of doing things and really just expand your mind, expand your horizons. Go beyond what you already know. Okay, Chiron in Capricorn. So Chiron is gonna represent a wound to your sense of power, to enter a sense of authority. So for you, the way that you can be healing yourself is just acknowledging that you can't control everything, okay? There's no way. And you can't be everybody's boss. <laughs> um, you have to also acknowledge, you know, the places that you're vulnerable. So wherever makes you the most vulnerable is the things that you need to be focusing on and learning how to lead with empathy and compassion. Okay. Chiron and Aquarius. Now, Chiron represents a wound to your sense of like, I would say purpose, but I would say more individuality for Aquariuses. All right. Um, and your uniqueness because you know in your past life Aquarius like people shunned you for being unique and weird and all those things so you need that's your wound right so you need to be able to heal yourself or ways that you can heal yourself is through embracing your quirky side saying that weird is actually better than being like cookie cutter like everybody else. You're unique, accepting your uniqueness, accepting that you're brilliant and that you're different and really celebrating that no one else can be like you, period. All right, Chiron and Pisces. So Chiron represents a wound um, to where it's, it's connected to your spiritual connection because it's in Pisces. So the way that you can heal through this is recognizing what is reality um, versus imagination. Like you really need to decipher the two. So you need to cultivate lots of empathy for yourself and other people as well. Um, you need to hold a lot of compassion and you need to find the wisdom within to believe in your intuition and your gut instincts. All right, collective energy. Okay, what everyone's probably been feeling since 2019. I'm just putting more emphasis on it and all the way up until 2026. Okay, so remember, Aries is a sign that's associated with lots of courage. So having Chiron and Aries, you know, this is going to really encourage people to really face their inner demons, encourage people to really, you know, bring the skeletons out the closet, encourage you to deal with those triggers that you may have. And you may be triggered by, you know, your lover, your friend, a coworker, a family member, anybody off the street. And you don't know that it's a trigger yet until you probably realize, oh wait, these are triggers. You know, what gets you boiled up, mad and upset? It's all about really facing that and, and being brave and, you know, utilizing your imagination, talking to your inner child. So people will probably be willing, be willing, be more willing to actually, that's like, conquering fears in a sense, you know? So adding those fears to your bucket list and checking them off, okay? So that way you can take the steps that you need in order to heal, all right? Now, Aries is also associated with our self-identity, right? So, and also like our own personal power within ourselves. So Chiron and Aries really encourages us to really focus on healing our wounds related to our self-esteem, building confidence, knowing who the fuck we are, our self-worth, all right? So people probably have been, or you have been focused on really developing more confidence. What are the activities and things that you've been getting into to where you can build your confidence up, all right? Um, where you can gain a sense of knowing who you are. What does that look like? I don't know, dissecting, going into your roots, finding out who you really are, you know, downloading your natal chart, reading it through and really understanding it, overstanding it, understanding it, and not apologizing for who you are or trying to change something that's already built within you, okay? Um, and just really being more assertive, you know, setting boundaries, 
Like you walk into a room, people feel the energy. It's like being in your personal power, knowing what you're gonna deal with and what you're not gonna deal with, okay? Now, Aries is also associated with aggression and lots of anger. So as I stated earlier, what gets you riled up? What gets you upset? What gets you so pissed off and mad? You know what I'm saying? That Those are the areas you need. It's showing you on purpose. Remember, everybody is a reflection of us. We're looking at people as mirrors, right? So those could be things that you need to work on. It's kind of like putting it in your face. Whatever you hate about someone else, whatever you're mad about someone else, it's because you don't like it within yourself, right? So people probably have been way more willing to be I don't wanna say confrontational, but maybe confronting, you know, where this lies out. So I'm pretty sure a lot of us has gone through many events where you probably lashed out on people. This is the breakup to makeup energy. This is like arguments with family, friends, coworkers. You see where this is all coming from? So go, it's like a film strip going through your mind, right? <laughs> um, so if you've been engaging in that or you have been or you've been you know victim to it whatever your situation is you probably have been more willing to really confront and heal those patterns um, of anger and aggression in your life and flip the coin instead of getting angry i'm gonna go take a walk i'm gonna go hop in my car and listen to some music or some of you guys went to i'm gonna go smoke a blunt or take a, a shot you know it all depends on whatever it is that you're working on because aries acts first things later so Whatever your vices are, that's what's been going on a lot too. Especially, remember the period of 2019 when everything kind of started, quarantine days, those couple of years. I mean, you know what I'm saying? So a lot of that was going on. A lot of divorces, a lot of breakups, a lot. Of, you see where I'm going with this? It's Chiron and Aries energy. Um, now remember, Aries is also associated with self-narrative and also our own personal stories, okay? So, <laughs> Chiron and Aries really has probably been encouraging a lot of people to transform, like I said. For example, you know, I've been raped in my life, so am I holding that badge of, hi, I'm a rape victim, you know what I'm saying? Because you're holding that energy. It's like walking around with it on your chest. You don't want to do that because it's like you haven't healed the wound. It's like an open wound. We want to close these wounds and turn them into scars, right? We'll never forget, but we move on from it. I'm no longer triggered. I'm no longer mad. I actually talk about this without getting upset or crying or anything. That's how I know I've healed from the situation, right? And I don't walk around with the badge anymore. Or I don't want, you know what I'm saying? I don't walk around like victim mentality like, woe is me you know oh my god and just sucking up everybody's wanting their sympathy and all this stuff like i'm over that stage years ago you know what i'm saying not saying i'm you know i keep it real in this channel so depending on where you're at in those stages where certain things happen to us right whatever happened to you you can see where you're at in the stage of healing if I'm saying this to you and you're getting pissed and you probably unsubscribe and you probably block me is because you're still really in an area where it's still fresh or you still need to heal from it. It's not gonna be overnight, honey, trust me. It may take years, okay? And now I'm just showing you where you're at. If you can, you can talk about it openly, you can tell people about it, give them advice. This is the whole point of healing the wounds and turning them into scars so that if you know someone else that's been suffering with being a rape victim, you can walk them through on how to get through their suffering. What worked for you? It may not work for other people, but it's still lending a helping hand. It's still lending and listening ear. It's still allowing them to see what will work for them and knowing that they have a support system to get through this trialing time, right? This is why we do this, so we can help other people. You can't help someone if you haven't helped yourself yet. It doesn't work that way, all right? or else it's gonna just play out all negative for both of y'all. You're gonna do more damage than anything. Um, so this is why it's important to really heal ourselves, okay? So so now, so now with Chiron and Aries, what does this look like? It's probably encouraged people to change the narrative, right? No longer playing victim, no longer holding the badge, 
right? So that's what that looks like as far as the personal narrative. Um, so that you can really align with your true self and let go of that dead weight, that dead energy that you're holding on to. Because it can really stop you, okay? Um, so letting go of those old stories. Instead of um, serving those old stories, like, let me give you another example. This looks like, let's say you got invited to do a podcast or something like that. Or you got, you know, you went to an event. And they're like, so who are you? What do you do? Instead of saying... You know, I was broke, I didn't have my parents, and I was homeless. Um, I got raped, you know, they stole, you know, all the, you see all these negative, you start off with all these negative things first, all these negative, like people think that's like the best thing to do. We need to stop that. Like that needs to be stopped. That doesn't make you any more rich or better than anybody else. We all have gone through some trauma. But if you start off with that, why are you starting off with all your traumas, right? So creating a new narrative saying, okay, now who are you? What do you do? Well, I am a divine awakener and a cosmic influencer. And I help people go within by, you know, tapping into who they are. I've been doing this for over seven years. I utilize divination. You know what I'm saying? You see where I'm going with this? Like it's more of just positive. That's just off the rip too. That was horrible. I would never come off saying it like that, but <laughs> um, it's a better rhetoric than just pointing out all of your traumas first versus who are you today? So creating new narratives. So you probably see a lot of people have been switching up or rebranding themselves or going to new versions of themselves, that's what it is, trying to gain a new narrative. Now it's like, I'm Bob and I've been an electrician for 20 years, I've got a nice home, I got a garden, and I read books all the time, I like hiking and traveling, I'm very intellectual. It's kind of like, you know, what are your what is your 30 seconds feel? So Aries is also a sign that's associated with individuality and it encourages you to really express yourself. Okay, so Chiron and Aries really encourages people to embrace the uniqueness of it all. Do you, I always say, damned if you do, damned if you don't. People are going to hate on you whether, you know, you do it this way or, or that way. It's like, if you're poor, you're going to get talked about. And if you're rich, you're going to get talked about. If you're fat, if you're skinny, both of them. Every, everything you do is going to be talked about by somebody in some form or fashion. So why not embrace who you are, who you want to become, and who you're acting as now, okay? So really embrace your unique identity and express yourself in an authentic kind of fashion, all right? So a lot of people have probably been willing to break free from these societal norms. What does this look like? Well, you've seen it. If you have TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Snapchat, you probably see people have been morphing since 2019, finding new ways of living, dumping out old ways of, you know, old belief systems and things of that nature are really blossoming into who they are now and sharing those gifts and talents and skill sets with other people, you know, putting it into the forefront, right? So taking away all the expectations and really forging into their own path, really, like really identifying, look, this is what I like now, this is who I am, this is what I believe, this is the way that I want to go, boom. You've been seeing that a lot, I'm pretty sure, but now I'm putting words on all of these circumstances and I know what it is, three, 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 three. Okay, I can talk for hours, guys. So how is this gonna affect you and uh, the houses, okay? So whatever house you have Chiron in already, this is the house that's going to be highlighted the most for you this is where each person this is where you know this transit chiron and aries is going to manifest differently for people depending on where your chiron is placed so i'm just going to do the houses um houses all the way one through 12. all right so if you had chiron in your first house you probably have been working on your self-identity okay um, this has probably brought up a lot of issues for you based on, are you confident with the way you look? Are you happy with the way you look, the way that you feel, how people see you, how people view you? Um, also your self-esteem. So let's say, you know, you've been made fun of your whole life because of, I don't know, you have hairy arms or something. 
what have you been doing to help heal those wounds? You know what I'm saying? So a lot of insecurities have probably came up for you. Uh, maybe you like started waxing it, or maybe you just said, you know what, I'm over that, fuck it. I'm gonna let my hair grow out. Whoever accepts it, accepts it. Whoever doesn't can keep going. See, you see where I'm going with this? You can see where you know you've healed and where you still need to do a little bit more healing, right? So that you can claim your power back. If Chiron in your second house, um, Chiron definitely, so this is a house of values and resources, right? So this could have brought up a lot of issues related to not having as much, comparing yourself to other people, like your friends or family members, people on social media. So lots of triggering probably has gone on for you, especially if you're a person that scrolls on social media mindlessly. You've probably been like, oh man, you know, Am I valuable? Like, am I worthy? You've probably been questioning your self worth. You've probably been questioning your financial forecast. Like, is this is this really going to happen for me? Can I really do this? So, um, any issues related to that probably been have been coming up for you. So, this is where you can really. It's like pushing you. It's like urging you to redefine your value. Redefine who you are. Um, what is your relationship with money? What is your relationship with any material possessions? Do you really take care of the shoes that you purchase? Are they clean? Are they still pristine? Do you like, you know, use a toothbrush and make sure you wash them after every use, you know what I'm saying? To keep them nice and fresh or you just throw them in the closet every time or throw them in the garage or throw them on the floor and you don't really care about them. You know what I'm saying? It's like, are you appreciative of what you have right now? You know, are you walking in gratitude? Are you looking at money as saying, I'm broke? Cancel that, cancel that, because I'm not. But I'm just saying, like, are you saying those words or are you saying, you know what, the way my bank account's set up yet, you know, this this uh, this number I see on this piece of paper isn't, you know, matched with the frequency yet. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? You gotta say things a little bit different, right? Um, so that's probably what's been going on with you and still is gonna go on until 2026. So like I said, we still have time to heal, right? We still have time to remove these badges. We have Chiron in your third house. Um, so your third house is all about communication, you know, local community, um, expressing your ideas, expressing who you are, all right? Expressing your opinions, things of that nature. So. For you, um, it's probably been a challenge to maybe find like a social group, maybe to get in a room and speak to people, you know, the way you communicate. Um, it's like, it's challenging you if you have areas with getting your point across, if you always get cut off when you're trying to say something, people always cut you off, or you're like just very meek in conversations. Like you're the person that's like, um, so yeah, we're gonna talk about the topic of, you know, how you feeling today? So someone goes, you know, yeah, so this is you. So yeah, I was feeling, you know, I just didn't know. And someone cut you off. You know what? I'm sorry to cut you off, but I had a point. Da -da 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 -da. And they cut you off and you never get to talk. So it's like really challenging you to be assertive. Let people know the ball's in your court. You're speaking right now. You have the mic, you have the platform. Like, and to be honest with what you're saying as well. So this could look like, are you a person that's lying your ass off right now, telling little white lies, I don't care how small they are, but are you been lying a lot or have you been able to really be yourself and be accepting, accepted for speaking your truth? Are people like saying, you know what, you got a point. I know that hurt, but you right, I'm glad, thank you for being honest with me. Or are you the person that's sugarcoating everything and you're the yes, cheerleader, yeah, that's good, that's great. Oh, you're doing a great job when really they're not. You know, which one are you? So this can really see where you need, what you need to focus on, right? Um, and that is asserting yourself a little bit more and being more honest with your communication versus telling fables and shit. I have Chiron in your fourth house. Um, so if this transiting through your fourth house, well not transiting, if you had already Chiron sitting in your fourth house, okay, you know, we all know your fourth house is your home, your family. Um, so you could have been, or you may have been, or you still are, dealing with issues in your family home related to, you know, siblings, family members, um, just really at home, you know, your emotional security as well, okay? And also maybe even you, like, like do you feel like you're in, do you belong? You know what I'm saying? Like, are you fitting in? 
with you know going to all these family outings or meeting people that are friends of the family you know things of that nature like do you feel like you're in there you feel like you're like you know the redheaded stepchild okay so what kind of and aries for you it's bringing up all of these things because you really need to confront those past wounds okay related to any type of family dynamic are you cool with your mom you know let's say for example your mom told you at you know 30 years later that oh your dad didn't want you you're just now finding this out as an adult right boom now it's like you got it the last seven years you've probably been trying to deal with that like you probably still haven't forgave her for that you know what i'm saying so it can that's what it can look like so those are the things that you need to deal with you know and handle um knowing how to transmit the energy don't hate her don't be mad at her she probably you can look at it as she probably waited until you were older and more sane in your mind and able to make decisions for yourself as an adult versus if she would have told you this when you were an adolescent you probably would have been a gang member or you know what i'm saying went crazy out in the streets and holding the badge of my dad never gave a fuck about me so you've been living that lifestyle because you hold the badge so is this making sense you see what i'm saying so you have to it's, it's allowing you to shift your perspective when you find the, when you confront your wounds and heal them, all right? If you have Chiron in your fifth house, um, so this deals with, you know, your creativity, self-expression, uh, you know, so this probably has been bringing up a lot of issues for you to heal as far as how you identify, you know, what are the things that you're tapping into? Are they good enough? Are your parents proud? Are your friends proud? Are even you proud of yourself? Um, your boss proud, you know, at your job? Like, are they, or are they looking at you crazy? You know what I'm saying? Um, it's like, however you're expressing yourself in such a creative form or fashion, maybe you feel like you haven't gotten the recognition that you deserve. You know what I'm saying? So that's like a deep wound right there, right? Let's say I created this, you know, I don't know, let's say I create this book and I should feel like I get $30 for it every time. But you know, I'm selling it online and people are only wanting to pay five bucks for it. So I'm taking the five bucks, but really I deserve the $30 and I'm not getting it, right? So that's kind of what it looks like to give you a visual. And it's just kind of like everything that you do, it just feels like it's not good enough. So this is what's coming up to you as far the way that you heal. It's really urging you just to just embrace your unique talents and skill sets that you have. Don't let anyone try and tell you to do something else, you know? Um, Cause a lot of teachers, family members, your lovers, friends will tell you, you know what? I think you'd be better doing this. I think you'd do better doing that. I you know what? Maybe you'll be successful at doing this. And they've just been like throwing stuff at you and leaving vicariously through you and morphing you into whatever they couldn't become. So you haven't been able to be yourself. So that's what's urging you to really embrace is for you to be yourself and carry out the gifts and talents that you wanna carry out and show to the world versus what other people want you to do. Success is not gonna happen overnight, but as long as you stay consistent and keep going, you know, things can turn out for the better for you. Why? Because you're living authentically within yourself you're loving what you do you're loving that you're not like anybody else you're loving the gifts that you have and you're just going to keep doing them until you have a breakthrough you know but as long as you're happy with what you're doing it feels good to the soul right chiron in the sixth house okay um so if you have chiron in your sixth house so this is um uh, you know it's all about your health and you know uh, your daily routines um so you've probably been getting a lot of issues that have been brought up related to maybe your health like as far as physically, um, you could have gotten sick a lot during this time, you know, and trying to like do holistic ways of living. Hopefully you haven't been in the hospitals too much, but you know, like this could look like maybe you used to be really fit and all that, and then you stopped working out or, or it could be flipped the other way around. You know what I'm saying? So, but it's more of a wound. So it's always going to be more on the negative side. So maybe mentally, um, you've been kind of like just you've just been kind of gone you know mentally you just haven't been there you've been in 
seasonal depression and things of that nature. So it's like, it's hard to get your footing. So a lot of things have been happening probably since 2019 up until now, and it will keep going until 2026, unless you start to heal this wound. What does that look like for you? So you can, if you have been working on it, this definitely looks like you have been doing a lot more self-care practices, working on your mental health, working on your physical health, changing diets or trying different diets, trying ways to exercise and stay active, you know, um, finding ways to motivate yourself, whether it's through music, yoga, Pilates, you know, listening to positive, um, listening to like positive playlists and things of that nature, whatever that looks like for you, okay? Um, just finding a balance within your daily life. Okay, that way you can feel good about yourself. All right, your seventh house. So this has been hitting you in your partnerships, in all your relationships that you've been in. So you probably were probably the one I talked about earlier where you could have got a divorce. You could have been break up to make up in and out of relationships or connections, whether it's friendships, whether it's lovers, you know, you could have been in the promiscuous stages and then you found someone and you're with them for a while and then you broke up with them. But not, you know what I'm saying? Like you, that could have been you. So, um, so what does that look like? Having a lot of trust issues, not wanting to get intimate with anyone. So you could be on a journey of like celibacy right now, not wanting to be in a connect connection. You think like love is just the dating pool of shit and you know what I'm saying? Your heart chakra, you're broke, PTSD from other connections. So if you're walking around that badge and you're like, fuck love, then you're in the wrong energy. What you need to be operating in is, you know, confronting all of those things that has happened to you so that you can love again you can you know work on yourself now and love yourself and know that you're the shit and that there's someone out there for you and then allow yourself to open up and engage with other people um so healing those past ones are really going to help you that way you can be in a connection for a long period of time you know for years instead of just a week or two weeks you know what i'm saying or a month or six months um, because when you don't confront those past wounds and then you have a relationship and then it turns toxic you know why because whoever you've dealt with it's showing you hello these are the things you need to work on before you can actually be in a serious loyal loving relationship and that's why you break up and then they and you don't heal and then here comes another person same issues because you didn't heal same issues different body Okay, Chiron in your eighth house. So your eighth house is definitely all about your shared resources, your intimate connections, and also ways of transforming your life, right? So you've probably been dealing with a lot of issues about power, your sense of power within the world, right? What time is it? Okay. Um, and control, a lot of control issues. You've probably been faced with a lot of opportunities where it's like you try to control a situation or gain some type of power you may have felt very powerless and so you've been trying really hard to get that back um so it's really you've probably been around let's say for example you know you go out with a group of friends and they invite you on a trip they've got thousands to spend you've got 400 bucks so you're probably like no i can't really you know man, i'm just gonna hold out on that uh the uh the little ski morning thing y'all can go yeah i'm not gonna do the dune buggy today my back actually hurts you know making excuses on why you couldn't do it but you want to be there but it's like you can't explore because that that's an insecurity for you you don't have enough money right or whatever the insecurities are for you i'm just giving you an example um you know, with your partner, maybe you're not good at certain things and they kind of like sh are shunning you for it. You know what I'm saying? Not shunning you for it, but you, you feel inadequate in some intimate parts with your partner right now. So it's giving you opportunities to work on them. Find a partner that you can be vulnerable with so that you can master those things that you aren't that great at right now. All right. Um, lots of opportunities for you to be vulnerable break down the walls you need to just start getting vulnerable break down the walls break down the power remove your ego remove your pride and get vulnerable that could be your superpower right now our chirons and aries okay we're on in your ninth house now your ninth house is all about higher learning philosophical type of 
stuff, um, finding your purpose, things of that nature. So you've probably been faced with a lot of things thrown in your face. It's like, if you've been a person who might be lost in the sauce and not knowing the direction that you need to be going, what you need to be working on, what's a good career for you, what's a good job for you, what's a good business to start for you. It's kind of like you've probably been up and down with trying so many different things to really figure out who am i what do i want to do <laughs> so that's probably been playing out a lot uh, for you it's like really pushing you you've gotta you know get out of old ways of doing things this could look like changing your look this could look like changing your location this could look like you know um just trying new ways of doing things remember sometimes you, they always say you can't teach an old dog new tricks but I say, you know, there's always opportunity for change. I'm more optimistic, but <laughs> it's like, you have to get out of old ways. It's pushing you, like get out of the old ways of doing stuff. Learn from somebody else. You know what I'm saying? And see if this works for you. If that didn't work for you, find somebody else, emulate whatever that is, try it again. You know what I'm saying? Like just to keep exploring new perspectives to really expand your horizon so that you can actually um, heal those wounds, learn more about yourself, and really find your purpose and your meaning. Chiron in your 10th house. Um, so we all know 10th house is all about career, your public image, you know, money, all right? So you probably have been having a lot of issues being brought to you as far as like, who are you? As far as your personal identity, um, this looks like losing jobs, gaining new ones, or not staying too long at them. Um, or getting a really good job and you're just like unhappy. You make good money, but you're depressed. You're coming home, you're drinking, you're overworking, you're bringing work home. Um, so a lot of things in that area. So it's kind of like you don't have any authority in what you're doing probably. Um, unless you have been working on this wound, then you've been able to really redefine, you know, um, your relationship in your career sectors so this looks like you know something's not fitting for you you don't like management so you're like you know what i'm not going to work here it's not worth my mental health to be here so i'm going to go on a limb and start my business you know what i'm saying um this is where i can have my own power wake up with my own alarm clock life you know what i'm saying um and i know i'm gonna be successful but if you're on the other end then you're just kind of like living the everyday nine to five, depressed, sad, stressed, talking about it, complaining about it when you get off work at the bar, talking all the bullshit that's happened at work to your friends. You know what I'm saying? Like you just, are you doing anything about it though? <laughs> so you need to start doing something about it. Redefine, you know, gaining your power back, becoming successful. Maybe it's like, maybe it's not that job. Maybe it's another job or maybe it's not even a job at all. Maybe it's a business. You need to really decipher these things and really figure it out. Trial and error, experience, experience, experience. So we have Chiron in house number 11. Okay, we all know 11 is all about your aspirations, social groups, networking, things of that nature. So you've probably been experiencing not finding the right social groups. Like you get one, you get all excited and gung ho, and then all of a sudden somebody shows their ass and you're like, nope, that's not the group for me. So you've probably been in and out of social groups as far as like Facebook groups or online groups or even in person. Like you had a group to go to the gym with and then things start kind of breaking down, you know? So it's kind of like you've probably been in and out of things of that nature. Um, it's, it's like you, you go, you, you're happier more in hermit mode because a lot of things probably haven't been working out for you unless you have been working on this placement, you have been working on yourself, I should say, to where now you know who you're gonna deal with, who you're not gonna deal with, what energy resonates with you, really finding a soul group, a soul circle, you know, a really good group of handful of people that you can confide in, that you can talk to, you guys resonate, you guys motivate each other, the yada, yada, you see where I'm going with this? Where you kind of like, um, you can also fit in, but also people are uplifting you where you stand out and have the platform too sometimes. So it's all about you finding a nice balance within all of your social connections right now, okay? In your 12th house, this has probably been hitting you spiritually. This has probably been hitting you in things that are unresolved, you don't have answers for, some hidden truths have been probably coming to the surface, lots of revelations, especially when the moon is full 
Um, you probably have been getting a lot of secrets being unfolded and told to you and you've been finding out about a lot of things, whether it's worldly, whether it's personally, whether it's about family, old relationships, all of those areas have probably been hitting you. So you're probably finding, having revelations about a, a relationship from like five years ago. Shit. So right now for you to continue to work on those heal, those wounds so you can heal them so that they won't affect you later on would be an example of, you know, um, finding ways to connect with your higher self, meditation, um, maybe getting some Reiki healing, distant Reiki, you know what I'm saying? Um, Tapping into astrology, downloading your natal chart, you know, maybe learning astrology, numerology, um, anything spiritual, reading some books, metaphysics, you know what I'm saying? Like really tapping into the divine uh, would be really good for you right now. You're seeing five, 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 five. So um, if you feel like you can't connect, like you feel disconnected from the world, just continue to just push through and research just go where you know your energy flows like so that you can learn you know what i'm saying so that you can feel grounded um and get the answers that you need thank you so much for staying tuned in tapped and turned on don't forget i have everything time stamped that way you can refer back to it i please recommend download your natal chart also guys announcements um I have readings open back up so be please go to the website vixenafdark.com and check out the different types of uh, readings now these readings can come out differently they could be videos it could be emails they could be phone calls it's all different so please go ahead and read the description box and god he wants to say hello and um don't forget to smash the subscribe button click the bell and i will definitely see you guys on the next one peace